fellow followers building a temple, furnishing a temple, and dedicating a temple. There's no denying the writer of Chronicles did a thing about temples. It's time for the Book of Two Chronicles! <laughs> So originally the books of 1 and 2 Chronicles were one book, the divide between them is completely artificial because they couldn't all fit on one scroll, they were too long, so ideally you need to read them together. So you need to watch a video for 1 Chronicles which I've put down there in the doobly doo, and if you're watching on a PC or a desktop then there should be a link right there, hopefully. I've, I've never done it before so I've no idea if it will work but hopefully if you click right there it'll take you to the video. Do it work? The book largely details the reigns of David and Solomon, but it goes all the way up to the exile and even tells us about King Cyrus allowing the people to return. Because the book is written much later than the time of David and Solomon, it's written after the exile during the time of restoration and the rebuilding of the temple. Because the writer wants to explain what's happening and why, and wants to show a continuity between the people and their past. That's why he concentrates almost entirely on the southern kingdom of Judah, because they're the people that are returning. Last time we talked about how he idealised the Davidic kingship. I am always just and perfect. And how we emphasise the importance of the temple and the ark. <laughs> These things carry on, but this time I want to emphasise two other things that the writer does. But first, jump cuts! <laughs> Anyway, the writer emphasises God's sovereignty, obey God and things will go well, disobey him and things will go badly. Or as he puts it in 2 Chronicles 20:20, 20, 20, have faith in the Lord your God and you will be upheld, have faith in his prophets and you will be successful. You see this over and over and over again in Chronicles, the king obeys the law and tries to get the people to obey the law and things go well and they prosper. Other kings ignore the law and ignore the words of the prophets and things go badly. So for example in 2 Chronicles 11 the Lord speaks to the prophet Shemaiah and he goes and tells King Rehoboam and Rehoboam listens and he prospers and gets lots of popular support and things go well. And then in chapter 12 Rehoboam abandons the law, stops listening to the prophet and so Egypt invade and ransack the temple. He then humbles himself and God decides not to destroy him completely. If you read the same story in 1 Kings 14, yes it tells you about the attack by the Egyptians but it gives no theological rationale. It is the writer of the Chronicles that links it with Rehoboam's obedience and disobedience. Now jump cut! <laughs> However, the writer of Chronicles doesn't just think it's about ritual and obedience. Yes, he emphasises obedience. Yes, he emphasises the temple. Yes, he emphasises the priesthood. But he also emphasises that you should devote your heart and your soul to seeking the Lord. Throughout Chronicles, you can read words or songs or psalms that praise the Lord. Three times he repeats, he is good, his love endures forever. It's not just about ritual and rules, it's about the heart, it's about praise, it's about love. Jump cuts! <laughs> Anyway, there we have it. Two Chronicles. God bless, fellow followers. Okay, so I just started enjoying doing jump cuts. Sorry. Oh, and also I'll try and do these more often. Sorry again.